Great, let's dive in. So the first up, line 98. Uh, Josh, what is NAMAC and why is it cool? Star 7 to unmute. Josh, are you there? Going once. The only hey, this is Jacob. I don't know if Josh is here at the moment, but um, maybe we should push him down just in case he jumps okay. on a little later. Okay, sure. Let's circle back. Let's move on to line 115. Brett, popcorn updates aplenty. Hi. Um, so I just wanted to uh, point folks to a few blog posts that, um, that came out of the, the popcorn group uh, over the last couple of days. Um, so the first one is one that I wrote, which is basically a kind of a recap of actually quite a few months of, of development on the project, and um, actually looking for some feedback from folks. Um, one of the things that, I, that I'm sort of thinking about out loud in, in, the, in that post is um, how we can use popcorn more um, intentionally uh, within our education programs. And I know that Doug, you had been doing a lot of writing about uh, literacies and, and I'm building off some of the, the posts that Michelle had written over the last uh, half year or so. So be interesting to get uh, folks' take on, uh, on some of those thoughts that are in the blog. And it's also, um, uh, you can see a lot of the design changes that are going to be upcoming within the app. And a lot of the things that we did um, actually build on some of the great things that we saw come out of Thimble, in particular um, the focus on um, starter projects as a way to get learners and first-time users um, involved in the project. Um, so any insights that folks might be able to share within that post are really going to be valuable for us going forward as we're right in the midst of uh, road mapping uh, what we want to ship um, for MozFest. Um, and just quickly as well, I wanted to point out a great post that Ben wrote. Ben is doing, getting LASIK surgery today, so he can't present it. but. Um, Ben's been really leaning into um, sort of surfacing a lot of the great contri contributors that are out there using Popcorn currently that um, you know, might not be building a web app for the WebMaker platform, for instance. And as it turns out, there's lots of them, and they're doing really, really cool things. So Ben uh, surfaced some of that in a blog post that came out of our last uh, uh, community call, which is bi-weekly. The next one is July 26, so um, folks would be welcome to join that. But there's some really cool things that happen there. Um, and just lastly, I um, wanted to thank Michelle for, um, for doing a, a lesson with the um, Story Camp folks uh, last week. Um, and this week we're actually going to be hosting a, um, a live cast with Arnita Sarkeesian. And Arnita is a, a great uh, video blogger who's going to well, walk folks through her process of creating video blogs, and, uh, which will kick off the Story Camp learners to uh, use the newscaster template that we created for, for the summer campaign. So we're really looking forward to that. And I just wanted just a little asterisk there. Um, some of you might be familiar with Anita's work generally, and, and she had a, a campaign on Kickstarter recently where she wanted to uh, examine some um, basically tropes within uh, video games. And she actually sparked this whole uh, kind of terrible harassment that happened against her. So it might be a sort of a moment of webmaker solidarity if uh, folks could kind of um, tune into what she's doing and, and sort of support her and let her, let her know that we're all behind her um, in her webmaking. So thanks. Thanks, Brett. Um, these are a bunch of really meaty posts. Um, I'm just kind of going through some of the kind of headlines from your, your post. Could you say a little more about what you mean by um, generativity generates complexity? It's pretty complex, Matt. I don't know if I can. But um, <laughs> basically, so we had this, um, within Popcorn Maker, we've been gunning towards this concept of, be, of anybody being able to create a template on top of our, our software stack. And that would mean that you know, we had that as a goal that uh, if, you know, uh, if a person wanted to create um, a template with arbitrary uh, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, it could do, you know, they, they could put anything in that page. We were finding that it was creating a lot of headaches for us in terms of 
being able to test the app, but also being able to design an interface that was going to work for whatever case people came to us with. And so, you know, prior to um, you know launching a, the version of the the site for the summer campaign, we had a really intense month, um, and so it caused us to to really pivot and think about um, you know what we what we did indeed want to ship and and where we wanted to place the priority of um, of this generativity of this ability for people to to build on our work. Um, so that's that's what that's in reference to, and it, it's both. Uh, sort of a, a design consideration, but also a practical technical concern about how we can, um, you know, put, up, put this magic in a bottle versus, you know, the bottle blowing up and, and smashing everywhere. Cool. And you also mentioned that um, you're a bit, well, I don't know if surprise is the right word, but you mentioned in your post that <clears throat> part of what you feel like you've learned from user testing is that Popcorn is a great learning tool, maybe more so than you first anticipated. Yeah, exactly. And I think that you, you know, again, we it's, it's it's there in the post, but you know, we look, looked a bit more closely at um, you know this idea of of web literacies, and you know, there, we realized that there was a well. It actually kind of struck me when I was in Toronto at the Kids Hack event because some of the places where the kids were actually falling down with the tool were were things like, oh, I want to grab this image that's open in another tab and copy it and put it into this field in Popcorn Maker to make an image show up. And, and it was funny because we had assumed that all the places that they would fall down were related to, you know, were our fault, were, were things about the, the, the interface of the app that might be less than that intuitive or, you know, that they might not be familiar enough with a timeline interface they'd never edited before, and so that might cause them trouble. But no, in fact, they found all that intuitive. It was the other bits that like, oh, I didn't know I could take this image from here and, and mix it o over there. And so, you know, we found that inspiring, but we also thought like, aha, you know, this is actually a great way to teach some of those concepts, um, you know, that, that Mozilla cares about and, and wants to highlight, um, and do it in a fun way. And, you know, we, we also saw that, you know, when, when, when these young kids were able to sort of think, oh, you mean I can take a video that I love that's on YouTube and kind of make it my own, they just immediately lit up. And, you know, because we've been working for so long with really professional filmmakers, we, we assumed that the sort of auteur, you know, wanting to create something from scratch was really where it's at. But, in fact, you know, there's a lot of joy that can be, um, that can be found and that can be sort of quickly activated when you allow people to, to, to sort of follow their interests and do things that they really, sorry, allow them to, to work with content that they really love. And so that was kind of a light bulb moment and I don't know if we would have necessarily found that, you know, had we not, you know, had our first touch with, of users be these kids. You know, they were kids. They were 11-year-olds. You know, so it was, it was actually quite a, Touching. I don't know. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Brett Gaylor, touched by the power of Remix to change people's lives. Um, so Brett, you're getting comments and, and notes under line 128 and some questions under line 140. Uh, one in particular, how bandwidth intensive is the stuff we're producing, especially popcorn with 50 plus kids editing? <coughs> Do you mean in terms of like what uh, – it's very bandwidth intensive is the answer. Um, the, the interface itself is, 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 not, so, is not so heavy. Um, I've run it on, a, you know, on my 3G phone just fine, but it's m more related to um, you know, the fact that we're dealing with online video. So I guess the short answer is if you're in a place that can play – um, YouTube videos, then you should be able to use Popcorn Maker. Very cool. Well, m more feedback uh, rolling in under the line 127. Any final thoughts before we uh, push ahead? We've got a pretty full agenda, but any final questions or pieces of feedback? Somebody asked how they can show solidarity with Anita. Uh, I. It's a good question. Um, let, let me think about it. I think um, obviously just Anita has taken a really 
um, intentional position that she, rather than just simply ignoring the trolls, she wants to talk about it. So I think that um, to the degree that we can continue to do that and that we feel comfortable with that, uh, writing about it and tweeting about it and let pe letting people know and just starting, sort of starting an intelligent conversation about um, this issue of, of online harassment I think is, is important. And yeah, send her a love bomb. Cool. Thanks, Brett. Uh, let's push ahead. Summer Code Party update. Ben Simon, are you there? I believe I am. Um, so uh, this is just our quick weekly numbers update. Um, so far to date, we've had 485 uh, Summer Code Party events, um, mm -hmm. and there, there are 633 total in the system. Um, I'm not actually sure if that – in at least 79 countries is true. but. Um, not sure if there's that number might be bigger. Um, and on our participants' goal, we are almost at um, 3,000. So, um, good stuff. Uh, the the pace of increase has trailed off a bit as we are no longer um, in the about homepage snippet on Firefox, which is how Virginia found this. Um, and so, uh, we will our our, our meteoric rise toward our goals will we'll likely slow a bit, but as we get into sort of the second half of the summer and the um, report back and stuff, um, that should be great. And there's also some pretty big events coming up like Campus Party in um, Berlin and stuff like that. Um, and then there's a few of the places where we've got events coming up this week, um, um, including in particular the Moz Party UK organized by Mozilla's own Doug Belshaw, I believe. Um, so you should all go to that if you happen to be in uh, Newcastle. Um, and then there's a lot of others uh, all over. There's a great uh, – the Netherlands event I know uh, Michelle has said is going to be great in Utrecht. Um, and lots, lots more. So keep kicking ass. Very cool. Thanks, Ben. Um, any questions for, uh, for Ben on Summer Code Party? Going once. All right. Well, let's push ahead. Thanks, Ben. Uh, Dan Finker. <coughs> Before we do, Mark, um, can you hear me? Hello. Oh, hey. Hey, Mark. Um, just for Ben, quickly. I mean, this might already happen. I was going to ask Michelle, actually. <coughs> um, have we got a place where we're getting people to feedback after they've run an event, I know that there's, there's the, um, the form which we're, we're contacting people and we're doing kind of a one-to-one -one yeah, thing. There, there's, but have we so got there's either a, part or somewhere yeah. where people are feeding back? Yes. So there's a, um, a sign-up form. I'm doing a, it like I'm emailing um, periodically hosts after they host to ask them to provide feedback into a form that we have that asks a variety of questions and, and lets them put some good stuff in. Yeah, cool. But I mean, like for example, my one on Saturday, I'm I'm interested in, is there anything public for that other people have done, um, which I can then look at and think, oh well, you know, that's a really nice um, activity that people did as an icebreaker, or um, yeah, I hadn't thought of that thing or whatever. Is it something public, or is it still all kind of in the form at the moment? Um, so what I mentioned is certainly not public. Um, I don't know if there's something in. One of the wikis that we've been doing. Um, what, Michelle, I was suggest, you... what I was going to suggest, then, Ben, is that because um, I didn't want to kind of threaten anyone's toes or do or replicate something that already existed. Well, can I suggest that we use the webmaker list? I was going to just start off a thread yeah, about people, you know, people have things been, that people have thought which were quite useful. Yeah, people have been doing that on the webmaker list, like and Michelle oh, right. have been. So people I'll have pull been chiming that, um, that in. So. Thank you. It's okay. Thanks for the question, Doug. I, I was going to suggest we're already kind of trying to document the uh, like the answer under line 179. So, so maybe um, you know Michelle, Ben, and and you can sort of add more links and flesh that out a bit because I'm, I'm sure other people have that question too. Which Michelle is busily doing now. 
Cool. Well, let's push ahead to uh, line 189. Dan Sinker, four weeks left to apply for an Open News Fellowship. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, indeed. All right. So, yeah, it is what it says on the box. Um, there, is, uh, there are four weeks left to apply for 2013 uh, Knight Mozilla Fellowship. And uh, we are, this also marks kind of four weeks of pretty intensive uh, outreach to get uh, the best applicants we can into the pool. Um, and so I kicked that off yesterday with a blog post that just tries to uh, do a very quick hit on uh, what are things that make this um, this experience unique and uh, what would make people want to uh, be a part of it. And the, the real ask to this uh, group of people on the phone right now is uh, to help spread the word. Um, if you have people in your uh, project communities that seem like amazing hackers or developers or, or things like that that um, you think should, uh, should know about this, then they should absolutely know about this. Um, the application is linked up on line 197. It's, it's super short and lightweight, um, designed very much for, uh, for, for a low impact uh, job to get, to get into this uh, pool. Um, we are going to be uh, doing quite a bit of messaging over the next four weeks. So um, if you can follow Open News on Twitter and help to amplify uh, the messages as they go out, that would be awesome. Um, if you can subscribe to the Open News RSS feed, you're going to be getting all of them the minute that they uh, go out. We'll be posting them. Uh, the fellows are going to be posting. Um, the news partners are going to be posting. It's going to be a, it's going to be a big old uh, big old messaging fest for the next four weeks. So uh, any and all help would be amazing. So that's all. That's the ask. Thanks, Dan. Um, one question um, that's come up when I've talked with some interested people or interested in applying is what level of technical chops do you need to have to be a fellow? Uh, you need to have some. I would say a, a, a week or two on Thimble is not a, does not a fellow make. Um, we're looking for people that can, uh, that can make stuff uh, on the web at a, at a pretty uh, pretty good level. Um, that said, you know, of the five fellows that we have, there's a pretty wide uh, variety of skills that are represented from uh, folks that are, you know, incredibly talented developers to folks that are um, much more kind of conceptual thinkers about how, uh, how you know, this stuff works on the web and they're able to, to, to work with some other folks. So it's a, it's a pretty broad skill set, but definitely we're looking for people with with at least uh, some level of technical uh, understanding. Cool. Thank you. <clears throat> Any questions for Dan about Open News Fellows? So Dan, if people want to help spread the word, is there like a sample tweet or, or something they can use to do that? Uh, Definitely, if people want to help spread the word, linking to the blog post that's linked up right now would be the way to go. Uh, but sample tweets are a great idea. Uh, Erica Owens, our community manager, is actually going to be uh, putting together in the next day or two a couple of kind of a few paragraph length uh, pitches that are tuned to various audiences. And I think uh, she's on the call, and I'm now asking her to, to also have an accompanying tweet with each one of those pitches. So that's a great idea. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Dan. Um, let's hey, push ahead Josh to. Uh, oh, hey, Josh, you're back. Hey. Sorry, I actually dialed the wrong conference number. Uh, yeah. I, I no worries. You want to tell? But... No worries. You want to tell us a bit about NAMAC real quick? If this is the right moment, sure. Um, sure. <clears throat> and uh, thanks to Jacob for inviting me uh, to sit in here. Um, Jacob is going to be one of the uh, um, presenters at the National Alliance for Media, Arts, and Culture's uh, co national conference. It's actually the triennial conference, and it's going to be in Minneapolis this year from September 6th to 8th. Um, and there's a little uh, URL at line 108 if you want to check that out. It has um, the core of the, uh, 
of the uh, conference schedule up there. Um, NAMAC is a membership organization of media uh, and visual arts producers, um, mostly uh, community level up to uh, sort of middle institutional level. You'll get um, some large museums down to uh, public broadcasters and local art service organizations, uh, lots of filmmakers, um, lots of organizations that work with youth, uh, lots of educational um, and community empowerment or type organizations. Uh, also, uh, a lot of policy folks, and uh, there is uh, a strong philanthropy contingent interested in participating in the conference. Um, and uh, we're going to have this science fair tech demonstration workshop presentation series going for the duration of the conference. And uh, I'm looking for folks who want to participate in that. We have uh, a number of different workshops. Jacob is going to be presenting the, uh, the popcorn uh, initiative and, and talking about that and sharing that with uh, attendees. Um, the ITVS Independent Television Service, which is sort of an, it's a, an alternative to uh, the PBS, but nevertheless a, a government-funded public broadcaster, it has an interesting um, program that allows people to uh, comment live on streamed PBS programming and create a some online context to, uh, to broadcast and stream content. And there are a number of other um, apps and video and data-oriented um, developers who want to present to the NAMAC community. And we'd like to invite Mozilla to jump in and, and join with uh, Jacob in, in reaching out to this, this bunch who are mostly going to be the folks who implement technology for for end users in media and arts contexts. So sort of an, an interesting uh, assembly of folks aren't, who aren't actually doing the programming like you, but, but uh, who oftentimes are looking for what you guys are making to connect with their audiences. Very cool. Thank you, Josh. Um, anybody got Thank questions for, for, for Josh? You can add them under line 117. Carla says, it sounds like fun. We can comp anybody who is uh, coming out to the conference into it um, if you're looking to ease your way. Um, we also have an exit and if you want a little higher profile venue uh, we can talk about as well. Very cool. Thanks, Josh. Let's uh, push ahead to line uh, 220, webmaker.org design process updates from Chris. Um, if you want to follow along via screen sharing, just click on the link in line 223 and then enter any name. Uh, so Chris, what, what are we looking at? Cool. So yeah, I guess um, just now that the, the webmaker.org site has been live for a little while, I just want to take an opportunity um, to sort of evaluate our approach and figure out a good process uh, for moving forward. Um, we want to be able to cycle the, the learnings from the different teams across the call um, back into the design process uh, so that the site can adapt and support the, the work that we're doing moving forward. Um, so it's really about aligning the, the execution of the design around um, that with the, the strategy to make sure the site is uh, delivering what we need it to. Um, so part of this will be opening up the channels across the, the different teams on the call um, into the design process feedback. Um, part of it will be establishing metrics and analytics uh, moving forward, and part of it will be um, doing some user testing with our users. Um, so if you click on the, the link there under approach, uh, it's up on the, the screen sharing there, um, you can start to see what some of the, the process uh, looks like and some of the, the early thinking that we're doing um, around some of these updates. So really it starts with um, some of the, the content strategy thinking. So some of the updates we're looking to uh, figure out how to include are encouraging people uh, to participate in the summer code party a bit more strongly. Um, highlighting some of the different communication channels that people can stay up to date with, um, and also lowering the bar on kitchen table events so that people can jump in right away um, without making it too much of a, a task for people to do. Um, there's also some notes on the, the layout and accessibility as well as some uh, graphic design improvements. Um, basically, as, as we're updating content, um, realizing that things start to shift around and lose a bit of focus, so we really wanted to make sure that we have the, the right structure in place uh, to move forward um, and to, to support the, the content as it grows and evolves with the, the work that we're all doing. Um, then if you, if you click on the links on 231 and 234, 
Um, that's uh, some early thinking around the homepage comp as well as the events landing comp. Um, so it, it just sort of starts to see how some of the, the thinking plays across uh, the, the different areas of the site. Um, taking some of the accessibility and graphic design layout considerations to support some of the new content strategies. Um, but before we implement any of this, we really want to make sure that we're um, including the right content and making the right decisions. Um, so if there's a, a part of the process that you guys want to get involved with, um, I definitely encourage you to sort of reach out and stay in touch, um, whether it's suggestions for content or if you want to help out with some of the user testing um, or even just provide some feedback on the early designs as we're moving forward. Um, yeah, just definitely get in touch and we can figure out a good process uh, for moving forward, whether you want to just um, pop your line on the, pop your name on the etherpad there or um, shoot an email and we can uh, open up the loop to keep the designs iterative and supporting the work that we're doing. Cool, so Chris, one of the things I noticed when I click on the events landing comp on line 237 is kind of pulling out the kitchen table um, event to sort of, this, this was some feedback that came from the summer food party team, right? Is right. Wanting to make the kitchen table experience like lower bar and easier yeah. um, and sort of less intimidating for people. So is that is that something that you're kind of trying to address with this, this design? Yeah, definitely. want to really just make it super easy for people to jump in and get involved, just sort of like a one, two, three kind of steps, um, get started right away kind of thing um, without necessarily having to create a, an event and uh, manage it through the admin system and all of that. Cool. Uh, questions and feedback before, for Chris, sorry. Does anybody want to say more about user testing? Uh, can you explain again, Chris, the zigzagging slide, which I think is um, this one. Right. Uh, link on line uh, 232, if you scroll down, oh, where is it, sorry. Scrolling down to layout improvements. Yeah, so um, basically that is just addressing um, some of the, the layout considerations. So right now the site is set up um, with sort of like a main column and sidebar um, structure um, and started to realize as we were trying to fit in some new um, content, the existing structure didn't do a, a great job of making sure that the, the focus was still consistent and still tight. Um, so rather than trying to anticipate um, or try to fit the content to the structure there, just trying to make a bit more of a, a flexible structure with the, the more horizontal uh, focused sections so that we can um, keep the focus in on specific content, um, whether it's summer campaign or um, communication channels, and that way we can sort of um, have a more modular sort of approach and, and pull things out as we need um, without sort of uh, breaking down the, the integrity of the design. Uh, is it possible to user test outside of Toronto? Good question. Is it possible to user test outside of Toronto? Yeah, lots of questions about user testing. And, um, was that, who added the note on line 246 about user testing? I, oh, do you want to say more about it, Ryan? Uh, yeah. Um, so before we go ahead and implement some new designs, um, I, I think it's, it would be appropriate for us to try and do some uh, more formal user testing, like the kind of user testing that was done with Symbol, where we bring in people who uh, maybe haven't seen the site before. We prepare a series of questions and have people sit with them uh, and do um, do some exercises and explore the site uh, to give us some insights and to guide some changes, which may also include uh, having them take a look at Chris's designs and see if they respond more favorably as we go. Um, that kind of user testing needs to be done in person, um, and so um, I'd like to do it here. Uh, we may end up having to fly some people in here to have all the right folks in the room to do it. Uh, I'd like to do it in the next few weeks. Um, overall, I think 
you know, I'd like to see us build a culture of user testing in the organization and build our capacity to do user testing everywhere. Um, but this one, I think we're going to do in Toronto. Cool. It sounds like lots of people are interested specifically in user testing or asking about process and stuff. So, yep. um, Very cool. Can you talk about plans for the community piece? Um, could, could you say a little more about what you mean by the community piece? Developing content and getting content, where does this live? Um, so I guess there's, so there's a couple pieces to that. First, like how, do, how does the community submit content? I think there's two paths, right? Like right now, there's a very uh, kind of uh, low-tech way for, um, for community members to submit their own WebMaker projects. It's basically just a link on the project list page that takes you to a wiki. So it's pretty, it's pretty low-tech at the moment, um, but you know, we'll be designing, I'm sure, a more robust like, form of um, community-submitted um, projects. But I guess the other piece is the, you know, what we've been thinking of as the, the gallery piece, like a symbol gallery or a popcorn project gallery. Um, and so that's, I guess, kind of a longer conversation about how we're road mapping the, the gallery piece and um, how it's going to show up on WebMaker. Um, so there's some more specific questions there. Um, I mean, maybe we can just keep uh, using the pad to answer some of them. And there's also a link on line 263 to the community calls for webmaker.org. Um, so feel free to come on Wednesday at 7 a.m. Pacific or 10 a.m. Eastern, and all the, the details are in the, in the pad there. Cool, so let's push ahead. Uh, Re Rebecca, do you want to tell us a little bit about some um, updates around how people can share the awesome stuff that's getting made at Moz Party? Rebecca, are you there? Star 7? Hi there. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Awesome. Um, well, we sort of have a, a smallish kind of solution as far as um, promoting the content. This is a follow-up from what we were talking about last week. Um, simply put, we're going to try and um, refocus the Tumblr. Uh, to show and uh, profile more of our makes. We've got a couple of ideas on um, how to get uh, the content that's being created, which is super, super awesome, uh, out there where people can really see and enjoy them, and also get an idea of what it is that we're asking them to do so that they realize that in some cases the bar is really high, but it's also low enough that you know, if they are able to just put some text on the page, that's great. Um, every road in is a, is a good road to walk in. Um, what we need some help with still is surfacing that cool content. This content in many cases is orphaned all over the place. Um, some people report into us, some don't. Um, and the channels are still a little bit distributed throughout to different people. So what we'd like you to do is submit these finished projects, links, and photos. Um, we have instructions for you to how to do that, um, mostly to the Tumblr because it's the easiest interface we have. Um, it's line 282. Um, is where we'd like you to send everything. Um, and if you could make that a bookmark and just sort of consider that the, the one-stop shop, I will take that content and make sure that it gets out to the world beautifully. Um, I have a little blog post there at 280, line 285 um, that sort of explains it a little more fully. And there's a specific list what to do if you see something aw awesome at Moz Party um, on line 287. Um, another really cool thing that we've got here <laughs> um, that I'm hoping that uh, Matt will demo for us is a tool has made a internal uh, symbol projects gallery. So what he did is he took that great big long line of, um, of generated URLs 
uh, that we had from the database, and he made it so that we can see what the content is, and we can put a little star on it, um, surface up our favorite ones. Um, and it's a fantastic tool. Um, it's got a password right now, and we're considering how to distribute those passwords because clearly this is a multi-purpose, uh, multi-user um, gallery um, where we can all choose our favorites. As you can see, some of my favorites um, that I will be publishing this week um, are listed on that page right there. <laughs> There's some wonderful stuff. Um, and then it also helps us. Okay, the tool. I'm not sure if the tool is on the call. The tool are you there? Um, I'm not really sure if he's on the call. Um, so did we decide whether is. we wanted to? Okay. Did we decide if we wanted to share that password just here today? Um. Or if we should wait until he gives us? Um, I don't know. I mean, what if? People think so. Right now, so this is an early thimble gallery type prototype that, as Rebecca mentioned, we're mostly using, um, you know, internally to the community to find great thimble projects we're sharing. Um, I don't know if anybody from the thimble team is here and has some feedback on this or um, how people feel about sharing the password for this. This is really an early prototype, so there's. It, it's, it was the first step in a tool, but you did it in his free time just to see if you could yep. make something. Uh, I don't think it's at a point where it's worth, it's worth sharing, but it's not ready for sharing yet. So, I mean, part of so we know that it's not ready for sharing to like a broad public audience. Yeah. I think Rebecca is looking for help um, from say like a small number of um, community members to like find great projects for sharing. Would we be okay with um, sharing with, say, like, you know, storytelling volunteers or just the group on this call, for example? That is really something only a tool can answer because his code is basically tucked away in a temporary repository. Okay. Um, so based on the status within the Thimble project, I would say it's not, not at that point. Okay. Cool. Does that make sense, Rebecca? I mean, we just follow up with a tool and the Thimble team for next steps on sharing this more widely? Sure, absolutely. But um, I like basically um, any help that you're able to provide, if you see things like that, please definitely send them to the Tumblr submit link that uh, um, is a couple of places on this section. Um, and I'd be immensely grateful. Thanks a lot. Cool. Yeah, and lots of people are pointing out this hasn't really been designed yet. I mean, just, just to be clear, um, you know, we were kind of struggling to find great examples of stuff people were making it at Moz Party. So, a tool whipped up this prototype as a way to solve that immediate problem, and it's hugely beneficial to the work that Rebecca and I are trying to do, just to kind of tell the story. Um, so, just yeah, I just want to kind of underline that piece of context. Um, I'm not sure whether Mark has been able to dial in and, and join us. Um, Mark Sermon, yeah, are you? I'm here. Fantastic. Do you want to take us through uh, sort of part two of the discussion we started a couple weeks back? What's next for WebMaker Tools? Yeah, I think it was just last week. Um, and so you guys can see, let me just see what line it is in the etherpad that that stuff is in there. <coughs> line 309. Uh, yes, so people can see at line 309, um, you know, there's a, a discussion we started last week based on a post I did on what's next for WebMaker Tools. Um, and then what Matt asked me to do today was just kind of lead more of an open-ended discussion on this. Um, so I'm not actually going to say that much more. I'm really just going to throw out two questions. Um, and the, the, the two questions I want to ask are, you know, what do people think we should be doing or emphasizing in terms of getting contributors or building a community around our tools, uh, in particular around Thimble and Popcorn? Uh, and I'll come back to that question in a second. Uh, and then the other is, you know, what do people think is the right way to uh, approach um, some of the bigger questions around uh, teaching code or teaching ha hackable games or building tools that let you make things uh, like apps? Um, you know, do, do, are there people who have prototype ideas or are there people who, uh, out there in the community we know of that we should be engaging around some, um, some early thinking on that? So those are the two questions I have. And I, I, I put those questions out to focus this conversation because if I look at some of the questions from last week, um, they've got a lot 
into stuff that is adjacent to, um, but, but a little different than the tools, in particular, like what's our teaching model. Uh, and I think that's something that over the course of the summer, um, we probably should have some dedicated conversations around, like carve out a whole one of these uh, calls and, and let uh, Aaron and Michelle and others lead a conversation on that, or even set up a, a separate fireside chat. But that's, I think, not the, the piece that I want to talk about today. So let me, let me throw that first piece out, is if we uh, say that we want to build a community around Thimble and Popcorn, let's be very narrow about that, uh, and we have said that and, and we're evaluating ourselves against that, um, what are the kind of contributors, let's say, over the next 6 to 12 months that we most want? Do we want people to be coming and helping to uh, design Thimble templates, uh, which is a fairly low bar, medium bar activity? Uh, or are we looking for people to come and contribute code to these projects or both? Uh, and what does that mean for the things we want to build over the next six months? So let me throw that question out to start because that's sort of the middle part of my blog posting. Cool. Does anybody have thoughts? Feel free to enter them by chat or speak up. People are adding some early ideas under line uh, 316. Yep. And my guess is I, I'm going to leave the, the, the space open in case somebody wants to jump in um, and not just try to fill the air. But my guess is some of the people who have got the strongest opinions on this are actually not on the call. Hey, this is Jeff. I um, just from basically working with a lot of the community members who have been contributing to Symbol and the goggles, I feel like um, it's really awesome to get people to be designing templates and working on the code, but I feel like based on the past, we really need to structure how we're going to onboard community members and support them once they become community members so that it's not just as simple as like make this one template and hand it off, but really building you know, a whole um, process so that they feel onboarded and can contribute in a comfortable way and not just um, feel um, like they are kind of free labor for us or feel like they are um, kind of just like not sure how to dive in. And Jess, what do you, what do you think that that looks like from uh, the, the kinds of things they need in order to, to be onboarded or to, to feel like this is something that is helpful to them? Like is it cool I mean, stuff? Is it is it like just talking to them? I think it's a little bit of both. I think for the, the bigger part, and I think someone like Alina or um, even Zeb Belsha can talk a little bit about this. A lot of us sort of came in from the outside, um, but I think that you know a nice system of kind of having like a mentor to bring in. For example, a tool was like my mentor when I came into Mozilla, and it really helped me to understand. A the Mozilla universe in the soft, like the GitHub universe, and even you know Brian um, loves words. Brian <laughs> really helped me to understand like how I can actually contribute as um, a designer, but also to understand kind of the way that Mozilla does things is really useful on the dev side. But also on the um, design side, for example, we don't really have systems in place that we could have. You know, like contributing to like a Flickr page, contributing like what to contribute. Um, how to make sense of a, I mean some of this could potentially be resolved through kind of like a how to contribute wiki kind of thing um, or how to work in our universe. But I think part of it is also um, building out a system of, of maybe like an onboarding system with maybe lightweight mentoring and things like that. Cool. That's helpful. And I guess, you're, Jess, are you working on some of that stuff? I'm going to be, I have been working a little bit on it with Hackasaurus, and I'm going to be working specifically on how to build out more um, contributor, build out more various ways for people to contribute to Symbol. So I'm going to be working with various community members to, to come up with some sort of process around that. So I would love if anyone would like to work with me on that. Yeah, and that might be a good thing to present here or, or somewhere else to get feedback on at some point too because I think it's really important. Yeah, I really haven't truly dived into that since the release, but that's um, on my plate at some point. 
Um, so there's a whole bunch of good stuff in there that I, that I want to maybe see if the um, people who are putting it um, can talk about. So uh, somebody uh, in blue, in light blue or medium blue said, uh, not sure the emphasis is just on our tools, um, a community of web making, and said where tools are just one mean. So I wonder if whoever is um, saying that wants to say what they mean. I can't see what color, who owns that color. Hey, uh, can you hear me? This is Michelle Thorne. Hi, Michelle Thorne. Hello. I'm the mysterious glue. Um, yeah, I, I just meant, I, um, this might go back to an uh, earlier conversation that was started with, with some people um, about more putting more effort around what does um, a community of, of web makers look like, where the focus is maybe on, like Jess was saying, around mentors or around um, instructors or around um, rather than ra around tool specific things, it's more around certain roles or certain actions. I mean, I don't have an exact answer myself, but it feels hard to say we rebuilt these tools now. Where's the community? And rather putting putting the um, the action or the um, activity in the center of it, rather than the tool. And I, I wonder how that relates to what the conversation is going on in 3:30 that with Michelle Levesque and whoever is yellow. If the issue of being too busy is similar to the kind of issue of like focusing on just having a a, a focused place where people can gather as opposed to a focus on the tool. So I don't know, Michelle, if you want to say more of what you're typing there. Like how how what does it look like for us to look like we're available to people? Um, I think I sort of wrote that uh, there's sort of a couple parts to this. There's both a, a formal level, which is you know scheduling time to bring folks in and prioritizing mechanisms that people can use to contribute. So rather than building spending time building an awesome feature, spending time making it so other people can build an awesome feature um, and actually formally deciding that this is going to be a priority on the same level of all the other things that we want to get done. But then I think there's also the sort of informal level, which is um, mofos have a tendency to be busy all the time. How are you doing? Oh, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy, I'm busy. And that makes us seem like we're too busy to be able to help folks out who might want to contribute, might want to sort of step in and, and give us something, but need a little bit of help, they're going to be less, more reluctant to ask for that help if it feels like we are too busy. Cool. And I, and I think that um, it's good to underline both structural and cultural, although maybe if we, um, if we start the structural, that's a good way to have both the conversation and the discipline about the cultural. So, are there, so there's a whole bunch of other stuff in there. Does anybody want to pick up on any of it verbally? I think mean, this is all really helpful, and it, it's actually nice that um, and smart that so much of this is not about the tools, but really about how we kind of reorganize our practice around getting people involved and getting them involved in a way that creates value for them or makes them feel welcomed, which I think we're, we're not doing either of those two things right now. Well, that's a very Hello? interesting question, question on web apps seem harder to open source. Is that true? But I think it's a longer conversation that we can have here. Who is going to just jump in? Uh, I believe that is Malcolm. Hi, Malcolm. Uh, great. Um, from the outside looking in, um, I do agree with a lot with what Jess was saying. Um, I think the mentorship is awesome because I know when I started working with her with Hackasaurus and you know it seems that everyone is busy, you know, which we all should be. But it's it's a stream, it's a constant stream that has a lot of I feel, even when I talk to different coworkers about, you know, the awesomeness of Mozilla and then sometimes they're like, So how do we, you know, add some of our, our views? I tell them there's a community call and then they are listening and it's like Mm, that's a lot of stuff, and so it's kind of like it's overbearing in a sense, and no one knows how to get into the stream. And so, when the whole mentorship 
aspect of it, I think it's really great. Um, even for myself, I have a lot of ideas, but, you know, how far do you go along in development of this? You know, because I know I, I want to deal a lot with gaming and how we can use class systems and leveling up so therefore, you know, members can do a lot more. But then when do you present it? How do you, is there like a particular type of protocol? How do you know if you're not going too far down a particular path or direction before it's like, whoa, 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 you're doing too much? So it's, you know, there's no cookbook. You want to make sure you have all the right ingredients to make sure you're doing what's right. But, you know, it's just it's a free-for-all. And, you know, by everyone respecting one another, it kind of keeps people timid. Do you think, Malcolm, it would help? That, that's awesome. Do you think it would help if there was just sort of more? I hear you saying two things. One is, like, it would help if there was a bit of a cookbook uh, and it was clear on how to jump in or how to propose an idea, which I think, um, at least in relationship to Thimble, that's what Jess is offering to do. The other thing I wonder if, if you're saying, Malcolm, is it would just help to have kind of more white space or more silence or just less overwhelming fire hose so there was actually just a, a place that you could raise your hand or step in. Is, is that Would that be helpful? Uh, yes, you know, because it's, there's so many of us, and I believe everyone has a particular view that they would love to share. But one, we're limited in time, and two, you know, we're we're reasonable people, and we want to do what's best. So therefore, sometimes, you know, the best ideas are overlooked just for the fact that you're respecting someone else's views. Cool. So does anybody else want to jump in and talk on this? This is, I think, a, a helpful conversation to linger in a little bit, and we can maybe get to my second question on a different call. Hi, this is uh, this is Doug. So, Mark, um, I don't know if it's it's going to talk about now, but um, certainly the tension between, or the same tension that I see between kind of formal education um, and what we're doing at Mozilla in terms of the tools that we're providing and um, the assessment layer through badges and everything like that, because there's fairly easy ways to plug into existing networks with teachers, but it's whether we want to do that and go down the same channel for all these goals. Yeah, I think that's a, diff a different conversation and it's a good one and, and as a kind of base of people we want to get involved, but probably um, people have lots of opinions that it will take it outside of this. I think this is much more about the kind of culture and operations of, of how we shift ourselves to get people involved in, in what we're already doing with the kind of people we're already talking to, some of whom are teachers, but I, I think what you're talking about is a much more systematic approach to teachers, which, which is good. Yes, yeah, so I suppose what I'm saying is, is, are we looking to recruit people almost individually, or are we trying to recruit them en masse? Yeah, I think, I mean, there's the one comment in there, and, and maybe looking at the time, I'll just respond to that comment and, and then pass the mic back to Matt, the mic back to Matt, um, is somebody in there talked about, uh, you know, dealing more with individuals and not just broad asks and not just looking at people en masse. And I think that's a critical thing that all of us can do right now and all of us need to do is really see people as individuals, um, partly because it's just the right thing to do and it's a, it's a culture we want to build. And as we bring those individuals in that we all talk to, they're going to see that that's something uh, they can do in bringing others. Um, but also just because, you know, right now we don't know, you know, what's motivating people, who these people are, why they care, and, and it's hard to provide value or pr provide entry points to people um, when we're just guessing who they are, which I think in, in many, many cases, in almost, you know, most cases we are. So that's, I think there's probably a dozen things we can do, but that's why I was really happy that when Ben suggested this sort of one-on-one -on -one outreach that he's asked all of us to do in terms of going out to people because I think we all just need to be having conversations with individuals who have expressed some interest and, and just see who they are and welcome them. Um, and I, you know, I think doing that before we really level up the mass invites uh, is going to change who we are. 
in a good way. So Matt, I will leave it at that uh, for now, but it's amazing, I would just say as a closing, to see how much people are thinking about all this stuff. Um, and it you know, just reminds me that one of the things to be doing over the summer is to keep talking about this stuff, because I think we're all passionate um, about building these relationships with people and, and learning who they are and finding a way to, to kind of light them up and support what they're doing. So thank you, everybody. A very good and generous conversation. Matt? These are, these are great notes. So Rebecca and I are happy to volunteer to turn this into kind of a quick blog post that just tries to summarize what's in the, in the pad, because it seems like there's like pretty good sort of foundation taking shape there already. Yep, I think that'd be good. And I think uh, if you guys also either want to um, suggest um, separately some action items or nominate uh, some people to have some action items coming out of this, um, that would also be helpful. And, and I can, along with Michelle Thorne, um, take the action item of, of uh, you know, building and borrowing on top of Remo, which is, is something that I think we're going to um, make a, a big priority of. And, and there's an idea floating around of creating a Remo special interest group for web making. Very cool. Um, so we're at the top of the hour, and we've got two items left. Maybe we'll go to Ryan, who I believe has a quick shout-out that he would like to make. Sure. If I can just turn your eyes to line 101. I've added it to the end of the, uh, or sorry, 103, to the end of the press updates. Um, just wanted to call out Dave Humphrey and the Seneca uh, students and, and uh, those of us that have worked with them. Uh, the new Firefox shipped today and includes a feature called Mouse Lock, which is the a uh, feature that you need in order to play first-person shooters in your browser. Um, the foundation gives a grant to Seneca every year uh, to allow for that class to take place and for those students to learn about how open source projects work. They pick a project that is useful and, uh, and in the best case scenarios, they actually ship new features into the browser. It's a huge deal to have landed this in the browser. It's great for browser gaming, but it's also a big win for our community of people who sat down with an idea and we're able to ship something uh, that was then copied by Google and will be followed by all the, all the other browsers. Um, so it's a big win. I just want to call them out. Um, I also think that Dave's blog posts about the project are one of the best examples about how you ship features in open source projects. It's a really nice set of blog posts and I encourage you to read them if you find that stuff interesting. Uh, so just congrats to the team and all the people who worked on it. It's a big win today. Yay! Ben Simon, can you do your do maybe a quick 60-second version of your item, and then we'll come back to it I, next week? I sure can, and probably don't even come back to it. Um, so, just wanted to draw folks' attention to the fact that um, this month Zoa has added its name and sort of joined onto two um, sort of uh, protecting the web efforts. Um, one is the Declaration of Internet Freedom, which launched earlier this month. Um, the link's in the YouTube pad. Um, it's basically just a, an effort to really jumpstart a conversation around um, sort of a set of principles. It's sort of a, you know, this is really what it means to fight for the open web. Um, and uh, the other thing is something called the Internet Defense League, which is um, formally launching this week on Thursday um, with it's led by a coalition group called Fight for the Future um, and includes us and WordPress and Reddit um, and a bunch of other uh, fun webby groups. Um, and it's, uh, the, their, their basic thing is to sort of be at the ready. And so if, some, if, a, if a threat springs up, to be able to have a network already built to jump on it. Um, and so we're not going to be doing sort of a tremendous amount at the start with either of these groups. We're having a, a launch party for the Internet Defense League at the San Francisco office on Thursday. So any of you who are in the area um, should feel very welcome to jump by. Um, or stop by, I should say. Um, and uh, but sort of beyond that, it's more that you know we're part of we're part of these efforts. where we have our name in the in the game, and sort of as things come, we'll be deciding how to. Um, Respond. Uh, so yeah, that's very cool. That's all. Thanks, Ben. And there's links to all of that under line uh, 383. All right. Well, thanks for a great call, everybody. We will talk to you all next week.
Happy web making. Bye. Thank you. Please stand by.